And now it is my extreme pleasure to introduce the president of the American Heart Association and the American Stroke Association, Dr. Joe Wu. Dr. Wu is director of the Stanford Cardiovascular Institute and the Simon H. Sturzer, MD, professor of medicine and radiology at Stanford University School of Medicine a pioneer and a leader in the use of induced pluripotent stem cells, Joe's work has earned accolades from the White House and the National Institutes of Health and earned him election to the National Academy of Medicine, the National Academy of Inventors, and to Academia Seneca of Taiwan, one of the highest academic honors in his native country. Joe was also in the top one-tenth of one percent of the most highly cited investigators in the world from 2018 to 2023. Please join me in welcoming to the stage the president of the American Heart Association and the American Stroke Association, Dr. Joe Wu. Thank you, Nancy. Long before I focused my work on cardiovascular health, my life actually revolved around growing pears and apples. Now, you probably were not expecting to hear about fruit trees during this ISC presidential address. But farm work truly taught me the life lessons that helped me excel in science and medicine. I was born in Taiwan, and my family immigrated when I was nine years old. We spent a year and a half bouncing from Bolivia to Brazil to Paraguay. And the final leg of our journey brought us to Los Angeles. Before long, my father purchased a pear and apple farm in the Central Valley of California in a small town, Ducoy. And from age 14 until I went to medical school at Yale, I was the manager of the farm. That job taught me many things. I learned of the hard work and sacrifices made by migrant farm workers. I also witnessed how people working together can produce a result greater than the sum of individual parts. Today, I'm the director of the Stanford Cardiovascular Institute and runs a state-of-the-art research lab, and I continue to see many similarities between farming and great science. Now, let's start with an overview of my favorite research topic, stem cells. As you may know, there are three major categories, embryonic stem cells, adult stem cells, and induced pluripotent stem cells. Embryonic stem cells exist only at the earliest stage of embryonic development. These stem cells can be useful to scientists because they can grow into many different cell types, tissues, and organs. However, ethical concerns make human embryonic stem cells impractical for routine use. Next are adult stem cells, which we all have in our bodies right now. For example, your bone marrow stem cells give rise to red and white blood cells every day. The main thing to keep in mind is that as we get older, our adult stem cells become more senescent. This results in a multitude of problems, from dementia to osteoporosis to sarcopenia and to gray hair, which I have a lot of these days. The third type of stem cells are induced pluripotent stem cells, or iPS cells. iPS cells offer the best aspects of both embryonic stem cells and adult stem cells with none of the ethical concerns nor senescence issues associated with them. To create these iPS cells, we can take your blood cells or skin cells, then add four reprogramming factors, which then resets these somatic cells back to their embryonic stage. And just like embryonic stem cells, these iPS cells can also become brain cells, heart cells, liver cells, essentially all cell types in our bodies. So in my lab, we specialize in differentiating iPS cells into all the components in a beating human heart. This allows us to better understand the mechanisms of various cardiovascular diseases for basic science and translational research. This also allows us to test a variety of drugs using patient-specific iPS cells as surrogates, a concept that I call clinical trial in a dish. And I believe it is one of the best examples of precision cardiovascular medicine. In addition, these iPS cells can also be differentiated into astrocytes, neurons, oligodendrocytes, pericytes, and microglia, 
which can then be used to study various neurological diseases and screen for therapeutic compounds, as shown here. Now, in fact, there are several ongoing clinical trials in ALS and other diseases that have already been initiated based on results from iPSL drug screening, as shown in this table. And in the example of ALS, we can now generate iPSL-derived lower mononeurons neurons from patients within a few months of their diagnosis. We can then treat these cells with various ALS drugs. We can then understand patient-specific responses and find the most appropriate treatment for each patient. Essentially, personalized cerebral vascular medicine. Now, I started working with iPS cells in 2007. Today, they are as essential to my lab as the pear and apple trees were on my dad's farm. At the Stanford Cardiovascular Institute, we have a biobank of iPS cells that includes more than 2,000 patients. We freely share these cells, reagents, and protocols with our scientific colleagues at other institutions. To date, we have sent over 4,000 vials of iPS cells to more than 500 investigators in the U.S. and around the world. I believe sharing resources is important for science and medicine to advance. That is, the more we help one another, the more we help ourselves, our current patients, and our future generations. Now, let's contrast that to 100 years ago, around the time the AHA was founded. It was a time when heart disease was considered a death sentence. And people back then surely dream of a day when heart disease could be treated at the level that we do today. This is why I believe we need to challenge ourselves by being innovative, by being bold, by looking forward 100 years from now. We need to think about what are the next frontiers in cerebral vascular and cardiovascular medicine and how they relate to traveling. Yes, traveling. I believe future generations, perhaps as soon as my grandchildren, may not only explore space, but even visit and live there. I envision a day when space travel is just as routine as the commercial flights that we all took to Phoenix, Arizona this week. This is why my lab is among those trying to solve issues related to how space travel impacts the cardiovascular system. But don't take it just from me. Let's hear from some of the astronauts currently on the International Space Station. Greetings from the International Space Station. I'm NASA astronaut Jasmine Ogbelli, along with my crewmate, Dr. Satoshi Furukawa of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. My crewmates and I have been hard at work supporting an array of research experiments and technology demonstrations in this microgravity environment. The space station is a unique laboratory unlike any other where there is no gravity. And because of that, we can look at science in a new way to benefit humanity. One of the areas of tremendous interest is research in human cells and tissues through a lab on a chip, or what we like to call tissue chips. We know that the space environment has profound impacts on human physiology, and through tissue chips, we can seek new avenues for drug discovery, uh, potential therapeutic development in the space environment. Many of these tissue chip investigations is near and dear to the American Heart Association. I encourage those in attendance to think about taking your research beyond Earth's horizon. Through space-based research, we can hopefully find ways to treat many of the mitigating ailments that humans develop on our planet. Thank you for all that you do to treat patients on Earth. Wow. Isn't that cool to have these astronauts participate in our IAC meeting? I'm proud to say that last spring, my team sent human heart cells to the International Space Station 250 miles above Earth. It was actually our third time doing so. The first two times, we found that microgravity in space can actually cause abnormal cardiac changes. So our latest project involves coming up with drugs 
that can mitigate the adverse cardiovascular effects of microgravity. Similarly, there are studies assessing the effects of microgravity on IPSL-derived brain organoids on the International Space Station. These brain organoids are generated from patients with primary progressive multiple sclerosis and patients with Parkinson's disease compared to healthy controls. Who knows? In the future, the American Stroke Association may be celebrating its centennial anniversary on the planet Mars. I would like to close with a reflection and a sentiment born from it. As an immigrant from Taiwan and as a farm boy in Central Valley, California, I feel blessed for what my adopted country, America, has provided me. I have also been extremely privileged to work alongside countless special people. From my mentors whose shoulders I have stood upon, to my students and my trainees, Everyone who comes through my lab takes with them a phrase that encapsulates everything that I learned from my dad's farm, from my mentors, and from my other life experiences. Work hard, work smart, and most importantly, work together. Personally and professionally, whether we are on a farm, or in a research lab, or in the hospital, or in any workplace, we are all better off when we are part of a team, especially when we all work together to do the right things for the right reasons. So for everyone in this audience, I hope this simple message resonates with you. Let us care for and reach out to our people, regardless of our race or ethnicity, regardless of our socioeconomic status, regardless of our religion or beliefs, regardless of our gender identity, regardless of our political affiliation, and regardless of our geographic location. Let us set aside our differences because cardiovascular and cerebrovascular diseases do not care about any differences that may divide us. Only by uniting our efforts will we make the biggest advances in preventing and treating heart and brain diseases for the next decade and for the next century. I believe now, more than ever, it's the time for all of us to work together. Thank you, God bless you all, and have a wonderful meeting.